My first video game that I still very much in love with was Pokemon. A sense of adventure and agency was the real big thing for me. Like I didn't have any autonomy really growing up and I really did like so much identity exploration through games. And I think video games were just a place of real healing for me. I was four and I was in a classroom and we were going around like reading different sections out of a book and I stumbled over a word and I thought about it for like the next week or something. <laughs> It wasn't just a sense of embarrassment, it was like everyone hated me or something. So when I was 12, 13-ish, I got diagnosed with first depression, anxiety, different eating disorders. So there was like bulimia, anorexia, but there was also like avoidant and restrictive and compulsive exercise as well. When I was in the depths of my depression, playing Call of Duty, like on PlayStation, I was like, maybe 14, and I would do that for hours. The people that sort of sat with me through that and just, you know, were there for me, I still chat to them every now and then. And honestly, where I get my accent is that I've played a lot of video games with people in Canada. Um, so like, just that sort of stuff. So my mum is a Vietnam War refugee. She came over when she was 13. And my dad migrated over when he was 15 from Malaysia. And they fought to the nail for everything that I have now and I owe so much to them and it took us a very long time to come to a middle point of understanding each other that the things I'm experiencing aren't their fault as well and the things that they're experiencing aren't my fault either. My first experience of really seeking particularly professional help was with people who didn't look like me, um, that I didn't relate to, I didn't trust. And they often were like older and white clinicians a lot of the time. But I think the game changer for me was finding people who really understood why I was feeling because they had lived it. Yeah, it's, we're not okay and we can talk about it and recovery is difficult, but like get in here and do it with us. And it's really, yeah, finding that community was the catalyst for me. I definitely didn't really identify as queer to my parents. Pansexual is more so like there's this amazing bit in a TV show where this person says that they like the wine and not the label. I do drink red wine, but I also drink white wine. I like the wine and not the label. Does that make sense? Yes. And I think that's very much me. So I can be attracted to people, whether they identify as male, female, anywhere in between. I now go by they, them pronouns, which is Super exciting and a whole nother thing that was terrifying. So now I'm non-binary in addition to that. So like, I'm very public with my advocacy. So my mom would be like, what does that mean? Um, and we'll have these like really compassionate conversations and she's able to just be like, okay, Emily, if that's makes you happy, then that makes us happy too. And each time that she says that she's proud of me for like the work that I'm doing, it's just, it's so wonderful. Yeah, I'm getting emotional. <laughs>